Hello and welcome to episode 67 of the Little Drops of Wonderful podcast. This is my place on YouTube to talk about all things crochet and knitting and yarn and craft related. All of that lovely good stuff. My name is Ali. I live in Kent in the southeast of the UK with my husband and our two daughters where they, well, we've got one upstairs right above here asleep because she's 14 and she's currently on half term. And we've just dropped the youngest one off at school and I'm therefore very hot and sweaty because I've just walked up the hill, come straight up to the bedroom and set myself up to podcast. Um, I'm also currently doing Vlogtober, so I feel a little bit like all over the place. I feel like I'm going to repeat myself a lot, show you things I might have already shown you last time or in the vlogs. So you're just going to have to bear with me. <laughs> it's going to be, I have no idea what's coming, basically. Um, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Starry Eyes Alley. And I put all of the notes for things that I talk about in the description box underneath this video. And you have to do that, don't you, to indicate underneath this video um, and I also put timestamps there for each section in case you come back and you need to find something under I don't know finished objects or you're looking for the giveaway because there's a giveaway today uh, what else what else yes um, yeah so other than just saying as a disclaimer that I haven't got a great deal of crafting done in the past couple of weeks uh, because I'm doing Vlogtober and that takes up a lot of time because I spend a lot of my crafting time editing which for me is another form of crafting it's another form of creativity and I absolutely love it but it does mean the fibre related crafts do take a bit of a backseat whilst I'm doing it but it's fine any type of creativity in my day is a good thing um it also means that this podcast is a little bit later than usual about a week later I should have filmed it last Monday but I just wasn't organized enough and I wasn't in the right headspace so so we get started should I stop rambling on with excuses and get started we are going to talk today about some finished objects which are woefully thin on the ground and I don't have most of them so I'm going to have to show you pictures but that will all all the reasons for that will become explained shortly. I've got some works in progress, but not many. I've got a ton of incoming stuff. I've got some books to talk about. I have a giveaway. So I hit 10,000 subscribers and my my little brain could not believe it. And um, I bought some yarn um, to give away. And there was also a lady who had offered up one of her beautiful patterns. So I'm gonna combine that as the giveaway price. And I'll talk about that later. I'm going to talk about the Strictly Sock Along, of course, because this is the home of the Strictly Sock Along and it is now in full swing. Strictly started on Saturday, just gone. It's brilliant, We're very happy. Strictly is back on the telly and all is right with the world, except I know we all know it's not, but Strictly is that little bit of escapism once a week. And then, and finally, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. I was going to talk about some what cows are going on at the moment, as in knit alongs and crochets along, crochets alongs, crochet alongs. Uh, but I don't I haven't managed to gather all the information. I'm worried that I just end up leaving loads of people out. So I'm not going to do that. So it might just be that I don't have none finally. But we'll see. We'll see where we end up by the end. Okay, let's start with finished objects. My first finished object I have to show you, and it is incredibly underwhelming. <laughs> it is living, I'll show you the bag, because the bag is lovely. Let's put my notes down, hang on. The bag is lovely. This is a bag by Craft Munga Law. It is my Halloween bag, I love it. I absolutely love this bag. And it has been ready um, in waiting to make little knitted pumpkins since last year and I've made two knitted pumpkins and I want to make some more and then I thought I'd try a little crochet pumpkin to match my orange knitted pumpkin I will put the link to this pattern underneath I can't remember it off the top of my head let's let's look it up okay it is the adorable crochet pumpkins pattern by Malu Knits and it's on maluknits.com. It's free, it's a very simple pattern, um, kind of back loop um, rib almost. And then you just do a bit of shaping. So I did this tiny little crochet pumpkin. Isn't it cute? Got a little stalk on it as well. <laughs> I love it, it's so cute. Um, 
yeah I didn't I wasn't so enamored with it at first I was like oh I'm not sure that's the my most favorite thing I've ever made but now I really love it and it sits on my little Halloween display on the mantelpiece above the log burner and I, I really like it I think I'm going to make some more because I think with something like this more is more you know lots of lots of little pumpkins everywhere would be lovely and the yarn that I've used and I know I've mentioned this a million times but I love this yarn it's Cartrev yarn this is my second ball of the same colour because I made the Hello Yellow Hello Yellow hat with this yarn and I ran out and had to get another um, skein of it and then with the remaining skein I've made a knitted pumpkin and my mini pumpkin and I've still got loads left so I think I'm going to make several more pumpkins because it's the perfect colour the colour is Flam let me see if I can find the tag to show you even their labels are really nice from farm to yarn in Wales it's 100% Welsh yarn basically 66% Welsh meal and 33% blue face Leicester Sixty-six percent Welsh meal and thirty-three. That leaves a percent. That, that's ninety-nine percent. What's the other percent? <laughs> the other percent is Welsh. Yes, that's it. So it's one percent Welsh, sixty-six percent Welsh meal, and thirty-three percent blue face Leicester. It's right, isn't it? Sixty plus thirty is ninety-six. Yeah, ninety-nine. Um, yes. Yeah, so it's Carter Fjord. <laughs> Ignore me just doing random terrible math. Also, excuse me having to keep playing with my fringe because my hair was great. I straightened it this morning and then I did the school run and now I'm so hot that it's slowly kind of fluffing up. So that's my first little finished object, which I have taken from the fireplace to come and show you. So I'm now going to return it to its rightful place next to the bigger pumpkins. My other finished objects I don't have to show you and because they both belong to Lilia, my eldest daughter. So I'm going to put some pictures up because I made sure to get plenty of pictures because I knew once she had them, I wouldn't get them back. Although, oh yeah, no, I did try to get the socks from her, but I think she's taken them up to her room. And as I said, she's still asleep. So the Frankenstein socks, so called because I managed to really make them completely a mismatch of different things. However, the yarn is absolutely gorgeous. And the yarn is the one yarn that I can never get the name off right. I, I always call it by a different name. I'm pretty sure it's Green Lampkin Yarns, that much I know. And the colourway is Witchy Long Legs, or it could be Witchy Long Stockings, or it could be Witchy Legs. I can never, ever get it right. But whatever it is, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's a kind of um, semi-micro striping yarn. It has these little pops of colour that just pop up all around. It's just such a joy to knit with. I made myself a pair. I could get those to show you, but they're in the wash. <laughs> I'm not doing very well. Um, I made myself a pair last year and I had enough yarn left over to make another pair. So I made some shorty socks for my eldest daughter, Lilia, because she absolutely loves shorty socks. She wears them all the time. Um, that's what she wears around the house instead of slippers so I'm more than happy to make her as many shorty socks as she can wear so she's now got some lovely Halloween socks and I'm really pleased with them but I managed to do the the cast on was the same but I did the purple at the top different like one had about four more rows than the other one the rib was different one I did one by one twisted rib the other one I did two by two twisted rib um, the legs are the same I did the heel I messed up the heel on one but not the other uh, and there were so many other differences. That's why they're called the Frankenstein socks, which just makes them more Halloween-y. So that's my first finished object. And my second finished object is also for Lilia. So you'll remember that I was working on, I've got the bag here. I was working on a, um, is this the bag? Yes. A cow uh, from a magazine. And the pattern was by Anna Boo's house. And it's called, I think just the, simple oh it's just called the ombre cow i don't have the front copy picture do i when i do and it is this one i just pulled the pages I, I didn't need anything else in that magazine so i just kept the pages um you can't see it terribly well there 
which is a shame because it's actually the cowl is in five different sections and it's designed to be used with a, a set of mini skeins where you get a set of five and each section uses one mini skein and it has a different texture pattern which is a really lovely idea um, and it worked really really well and the mini set that I was using was by my lovely friend Becky who is back to Blighty and it was actually a gift from a gorgeous friend Jodie um, in the Just Breathe uh, colour. She released it back in lockdown and I was doing lockdown vlogs at the time and Jodie sent it to me. Um, which was really, really lovely. And at the same time, um, my youngest daughter, Phoebe, had bought me this gorgeous crochet hook. And I wanted to use that yarn from Jodie because it was from Jodie and also because Becky had dyed it and with this hook because it was from Phoebe. And I just love the idea of combining those lovely things all in one lovely project. And I started making a shawl, the wild wheat shawl, but I wasn't loving how the colours were working in it. I, I want to make that again but in just one or two colours rather than striping it. So then I saw that in a magazine and I thought wow that's perfect and I got to the fifth colour which would have been this one, the speckled, which I absolutely love and um, Lilia looked at it and said those are kind of like the colours from the dynamite video, the pastel colours that are in the dynamite video for BTS and Lilia is an enormous BTS fan huge, so is Phoebe. And she said, if you added yellow instead, that would be like a BTS cow. And I was like, that's a good idea. So I had a little rummage in my stash and I had this gorgeous pale yellow. It really is gorgeous. This was a gift um, last summer from lovely Annette who lives in Denmark. The most, uh, just a glorious place to live, Annette. And she sent this to me. It is called Beach House. And it is by Wool Lap. It's hand dyed in Denmark. Here's the label. It is just a, a, a 75 25 superwash merino nylon sock yarn. And it's called Beach House. And it is a beautiful pale yellow. Absolutely gorgeous. So I siphoned off some of this to add the pale yellow and honestly, she's not taken it off. She has worn it every single day. I think she's even got it up in her room. So I couldn't even get it from the hallway downstairs because she just, she loves it. She wears it to school and she's so happy with it. So it was really worth making that switch so that she could have something that she loves so much and she feels so proud of. So that was really good. And I've still got all of this. I only used about 15 grams. So I've got all of this left to play with. And now I have to do my project bag takedown. Do you know when you finish a project? I've spoken about this before, where you have your project bag and you've got your hook in it and you've got all your... Did you hear that? That was a motorbike going past and it was really loud. It made me jump. Um, you've got all your yarn in there, you've got your bits and bobs, you've got your yarn labels, your pattern, your hook, pen, stitch markers. And then we have to take, I have to take it all out and put it all back where it goes or put it into use elsewhere. It's always quite sad at the end of a project seeing these things that have been part of your crafting life for, you know, however many weeks, you know, we have to go away again. So that is my final finished object, which I don't have to show you. What a rubbish podcaster. Okay, moving on to works in progress. Now I'm not going to show you, um, I'm only going to show you one work in progress because although I've got many, I haven't made any progress on anything except for this one that I'm about to show you. Um, so I don't want to just keep showing you the same stuff. So, And that is purely because I'm doing Vlogtober. So that's where my energies have been going. But obviously it is Strictly season. So I have been working on my fabulous Strictly socks, which are living in my fabulous Strictly bag. <laughs> I just love this so much. This was a gift last year from Julie at So Unique. Um, she gave a prize for the Strictly Sock Along um, and I've popped it in the prizes um, thread now on Ravelry. In fact, I've been really, really busy updating the prizes thread so you can see everything that's been donated. I've still got a few more to add, quite a few more actually. Uh, and what I'm trying to do is put everything in that's up for 
prizes and link to all the people's online places where they have them and their shops so you can go and investigate and do a bit of shopping and see the kind of things they sell or the posts that they do just so you can show them a little bit of love and um, you know go to Instagram and follow them or go to YouTube and subscribe or go to their shop and you know buy something if you can afford it or just favorite their shop or share it or just you know all of these things just help the small crafty businesses that are being so generous by donating prizes for the Strictly Sock Along. And I think for me, the fact that the Strictly Sock Along can help, you know, help people get names out there and get talked about and get seen and stuff is just one of the most brilliant parts of it. So do go and have a look at the prizes. So I'm going to share them all on Instagram as well, but that's a whole other section of work to do, which I probably won't do until November after I've finished vlogging. Where am I going with this? Yeah, I put a picture of the, the bag prize from Julie on the prizes thread, but this one's mine. It's got Lindy Hop dancers on it, and it always makes me smile because it reminds me of our trips, especially at this time of year, to Chatham Dockyard, where they quite often have vintage events with Lindy Hop dancers. And inside it's got all vintage dresses, which reminds me of Lilia because she loves vintage fairs and things like that. So that's my Strictly bag for this year. And then inside I've got my Lola socks, which is a pattern by Jules of So Sweet Violet, which I, I'm sure you know by now, she is donating. So it's the Lola socks and this is like the official Strictly pattern this year. And she's donating three pounds from the sale of every pattern to Bill's special bus. Um, if you wanna know more about that, if you hop over to Gainer's channel, it's Tales from Cookie Land, she has an explanation underneath all of her videos about that charity, uh, which explains it a lot better than I ever could. Um, and it's really nice that Jules, Jules and Kelly of Lay Family Yarns have chosen to donate money from the sale of their strictly, strictly related pattern and yarn to that charity. What lovely, lovely ladies and what a lovely thing to do. Thank you Jules and thank you Kelly and thank you Gaynor as well. And I'm making the Lola socks and I am using yarn by Third Vault Yarns, which I bought last year. It's so pretty. It's in the colorway Ray, which is a Star Wars reference. Oh, just pulled the little ribbon off. It's a bit luxurious because it is 80% superwash merino, 10% nylon and 10% cashmere. That's her cool little logo. The base uh, the, with the cashmere in it is her Hevelin four ply base. There you go. And it is so beautiful. And it didn't even occur to me that the dyer behind Third Vault Yarns is called Lola. <laughs> so I am making Lola socks with Lola yarn. It wasn't planned at all. I just thought that this yarn was so beautiful and it would suit the pattern so well. And do you know what? It doesn't happen often, but I was right. <laughs> so I'm using my little cocoa and flora. I always knit my socks at the moment with DPNs. So this is a little DPN holder. If you don't know, a DPN holder basically clips around your DPNs and holds them all together and stops your project falling off the needles when you're not working on it. And this is my little cloud DPN holder by Eva of Cocoa and Flora. And she is just lovely. She has a YouTube channel and her videos are just so cosy and so lovely and so gentle. I would highly recommend you go and, go and check her out and she makes the most beautiful things. So this is sock one or two. I knit my socks concurrently. So the other one, oh, I'm gonna get all tangled. The other one is here and it's living in my DPN holder by Gorgeous Barbara of Knitting I Love. And this is a really good one. It's quite unusual because it's, it, it's a bit more, it's different. You can see her, can you see her logo there? Oh no, it's on this side. There you go. Knitting I Love. She's got a website where you can buy all these things and she does uh, tags and things that you can add to your projects, which I really love. I was wearing a cowl this morning, which is probably why I got so hot. Um, with a, one of her little tags on and I always make sure it's at the front because it just makes it look all professional. Uh, so this is the other one that I'm working on. So I've got two socks and what I do is I work on them concurrently. So I'll do a little bit on one and a little bit on the other. So this is the one I actually started with and then yesterday morning I put this aside and started on this one. 
and as you can see it, it's overtaken so now it's time for me to catch this one up and then when they both get to the heels I'll do the heels one each and then the gusset decreases one each and then do the feet one what am I saying you know what I mean I'll get them both to the to the point of doing the heels then I'll do the heel on one and put it down the heel on this one put it down come back and do the gusset decreases on this one put it down gusset decreases put it down foot I'll probably do 20 rows 20 rows 20 rows 20 rows and then when I get to the toes one toe one toe and that's how I knit them concurrently goodness me what am I saying and here we are look at that pattern it is deceptively easy it is um it's only a four row repeat and it creates this lovely lace pattern which you'll be able to see better once I've blocked it but look at how it looks with the yarn I could not be happier having chosen this yarn it looks so pretty look at those little pops of pink and sort of oh, muted grey browny grey it is just so pretty and my little stitch markers were a gift from my friend Hannah of Hannah from Sheep Sally I thought they looked quite strictly fried so they went on to my onto my Strictly socks to help me remember when I start the pattern section otherwise sometimes I just keep knitting so I'm really really happy with my Strictly socks I'm going to tuck them back into their DPN holders so while I'm doing this I'll ask you are you taking part in the Strictly sock along how are your socks coming along are you using the hashtag on Instagram because I do draw prizes from the hashtag as well as from the chatter threads and I'll talk a bit more about all of that when I get to the Strictly section so that's my work in progress that I'm going to talk about I'm not going to talk any, about any more works in progress oh do you know I'm going to show you this quickly this is completely I'm doing it all wrong now this should be an incoming but I'm going to show you now because I'm really excited about it by the way if you can keep hearing my stomach making noises I've no idea why it's making so much noise now because normally it doesn't gurgle until much later in the day I have slightly different plumbing to everyone else and therefore it can be slightly noisier so I don't know what's going on with it um Julie the same Julie so unique so when she sent the prize for the Strictly sock along she sent a bag for me and it could not be more perfect I've already shown this on the vlog so I apologize if I'm repeating myself but look at this it's a Highland coup made with tweedy fabric and embroidery and it's on super sparkly corduroy oh it's just beautiful I've already decided that this is going to be my project bag for January because it's just such a lovely clean fresh looking thing yet still a little bit wintry I don't know what I'm going to be making in January but whatever it is is going to be in here and she also put in um I've got yarn in here that I need to remember to talk about as well so I ordered hang on let me get my act together so first and foremost here is Julie's details because you need that so that she's so unique and there are all her online places and then with the bag she also popped in one of her key rings which is a sparkly Highland cow can you see how it's this is going to go on my car keys and cheer me up every day on my way to work and she also popped in a smaller version which is the Highland Cow stitch marker now these are designed by Julie's daughter who is a fantastic artist and who I'm going to talk about probably in the next episode and in coming episodes of the vlogs watch this space and from her shop I had ordered because I saw these and I was like right I can't decide which one I want I'm just going to get all four I ordered her Highland Coo badges so I've got one with a green background one with the dark tartan one with the blue and one with the pink <laughs> let me just show you one up close so you can get a sense of what they look like because <laughs> otherwise I'm going to drop everything aren't they so cute so I've got one for me one for the girls and one for my mum so we can put them on the girls can put them on their pin pennants because I've got them pin pennants to put away um, and I'll put them on my pin pennant or maybe on my or maybe I could put it on this project bag so this could just be a Highland Coo extravaganza 
What yarn have I got in here to show? Oh yeah, I forgot about this. I'm just going to put this to one side. Also, Julie had a badge making workshop at her shop and she very kindly did me some glittery badges of my original terrible design for the Strictly Socks badges. Now I've talked about these before and how I'm not very happy quite with the, how the design was. I love the doodle but I wasn't really happy with everything. It needed tweaking. How cute are these? So I've got a few of these. I don't know what to do with them. Because they're really lovely, but my design kind of lets it down a bit. So I'm going to make a decision on that. Watch this space. But I have news on the Strictly badges. I am hoping to have the new and improved version in the next couple of weeks. So I will keep you posted. Um, yeah. Lots that I want to talk about there, but there's no point in me saying anything yet. I want to wait until I've got them in front of me. Where was I? Oh yes, I'm going to talk about some whips. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about one thing that I'm going to be making in the next few weeks because every year I make something for the kids' birthdays, and it's Phoebe's birthday at the end of November. So I have got some cotton yarn. In these colours and from this book Dinosaurs and Mammoths and more prehistoric Amagurumi I am going to be making her peaches the Triceratops let me just find peaches the Triceratops there she is the girls request something every year and this is Phoebe's request this year peaches the Triceratops so cute I'll have to show you the little boy holding it. Yes. How cute is that? <laughs> um, so that's what I'm going to be making for Phoebe's birthday. So this is a whip upcoming. Watch this space. I'm looking forward to that because I love making amigurumi. Okay, moving on to incoming things. Okay. I've got some Strictly prizes, which I'll show when we talk about Strictly Sock Along. Um, I also got a few bits that I've shown in the vlog, so I'm not going to repeat now and show them again because otherwise I think I'll just bore you to tears. I've shown you the bag from Julie uh, and I've got some other bits. So that is a Strictly prize. Oh, I wanted to show you some yarn. Lovely um, Maureen in... Maine or Massachusetts. I can't remember Maureen. So the yarn is from Maine, but I can't remember if Maureen said she was actually in Massachusetts and not Maine. And if you've um, been watching my vlogs, you will know that I have terrible trouble with my geography. Anyway, she sent me a lovely, lovely parcel with lots of maple goodies in it, which we have been having a lot of fun sampling and we've still got more to sample and she also popped in some gorgeous yarn it's by on the round see the labels there it's on the round yarn it's the spontaneous sock yarn which is a superwash wool and nylon base it's in the colorway daffodil and she sent me two skeins and look at those Aren't they beautiful? As you know, my favourite colour is yellow. So obviously I'm only going to be able to just admire these for a while and treat them like little ornaments before I can make a decision about what to turn them into. But it's interesting having two schemes because that really opens up the possibilities of what to do with them. So thank you Maureen for this. I'm really, really happy with them yarn snipping. I also um, ordered, ordered, joined, ordered, bought, I don't know, joined in with a, with a minis club, a yarn minis club by Beaches and Birdsong. So uh, she has donated yarn before as a giveaway prize and I saw that she had a mini scheme club. Where have I put it? I'd left it in the podcasting box. 
um, yeah, she has a mini skin club, which is every three months you sign up for it. And I was just in time and I managed to get the October, November, December one. Now I used to get the little French Meadow mini skin club every quarter. And I absolutely love getting that. And when they stopped dying, I was really upset. So I was like, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna rebound. <laughs> I'm gonna try another one. And I wasn't at all disappointed. The theme for October, well, the theme, not the theme, the names of the yarn for October are Canada Geese and Starling Murmuration. And they are so beautiful. They go really well together as well. Aren't they gorgeous? Look at the, that one I'm assuming is the Starling Murmuration because look at the speckles. They look like Starlings murmurating. And that must be the Canada Geese one there really pretty and you get a little uh, bookmark and there was a little sweet treat which I gave to Dan and it's all wrapped up in this fantastic recycled and recyclable packaging and it's printed with like eco water-based ink and stuff which I thought was really really lovely and all the all the packaging and so on is completely reusable and recycling re recyclable so that was a really really good purchase and obviously I've got two more coming so that's really exciting it's like a little gift to myself in the post every month you know because I really need more yarn um bah, 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 yarn I got where's the where did I put the yarn oh here we go so this is a gift um from a lovely lady called Lynn and she sent this to me just as a thank you it was a complete surprise um it just turns up in the post and I was like who's this who's sending me some yarn and it was from Lynn and it was just a thank you for the videos and she sent me such a lovely note and it's from you felty thing the colorway is happy you felty thing are based in Wales I think I'm sure that's what she said in her note and look at the color how beautiful is that color now I've got a couple of things in mind for this yarn. I originally thought I might make the Ingalls mitts um, for re just something she said in her note made me think of doing the Ingalls mitts because that was my name. That was my name before I got married. Uh, it was my dad's name. It was a Scottish name, and the Ingalls mitts are by uh, Isolde Teague, I think, and they're named for the Scottish nurse um someone ingles i can't remember uh, but that was my name before i was married and i i i was thinking about those but now i'm thinking that this is too busy a yarn for the ingles mitts and it wouldn't show the um the pattern quite right so then i was thinking some arm warmers might be nice maybe the wrist ticklers by k of the bakery bears or something like that it's just such a lovely colour. I kind of want it on my hands so I can see it. But anyway, thank you, Lynn. That was a lovely surprise and I feel very happy. Happy. I feel very happy to have the happy yarn. <laughs> okay. I think that's it for incoming. Um, other than the stuff that I've got that's come in for the Strictly Sock Along. So I think what I'm going to do is move along to the Strictly Sock Along now, even though that's out of order with my notes. So that's going to confuse me. Oh, sorry about wobbling you there. I got me. I have. I can't find my tripod. I don't know where it's gone. I'm assuming Lily has taken it up to her room for making a phone call or something. So I've got you on my other tripod, which is balanced on two boxes. So it's a little bit more wobbly than usual. Right. I have been looking at the possibility of creating a different space for chatter and posting FOs. Uh, for those of you that can't use Ravelry, but it's proving to be quite a tricky thing to set up. So what I'm going to do is, obviously I always draw um, prizes from the hashtag as well as the chatter thread. So I think that kind of takes care of itself as long as you're on Instagram and you're using the hashtag. And if you can't post, and there's only a small group of you, but I know that you are there and um, that it is a problem for you. So I think if you've got an FO and you can't use Ravelry, use the hashtag Strictly Sock Along 2020 F. Oh, please don't use this if you've already posted said FO in the FO thread. I will be checking. Um, but if you can't use Ravelry and you use that, I can see that and include it when I draw winners. So I can assign you 
um, I can assign you a space in the FO thread, basically. So if you use that hashtag, I'll keep an eye on it. When I see it, I'll add you to the FO thread so that when I draw from the FO thread, you're in with the chance of winning as well. And I think that'll work because there's a small enough group of people that it's affecting that it won't get unmanageable for this year. And then next year, I'll be able to have a proper think about how to, to manage that. I think that's the best way to do it, just to, um, because of the admin involved and the time that I, the limited time that I have, I think for this year, that's the best way to do it. So if you are having problems posting to Ravelry, use the, when, and you finished your Strictly Socks, use the hashtag Strictly Sock on 2020 FO. Otherwise, just use the normal hashtag and you'll be picked up uh, at random for the prizes that I draw from the chatter and the um, hashtag. Hope that makes sense. Um, I've got some incoming prizes that I want to share with you, but I have lost track about what I shared last time and what I've shared already. So I'm just going to flash a load of stuff at you and show you some lovely yarn and then have a look at the prizes thread as well. Um, and you'll see it all there. So first of all, I want to show you some yarn that was sent by a lovely lady. I can't remember if I checked it was okay to say your name. So I'm just going to say she's a lovely teacher. So huge, huge thank you to her because I think the teachers during the pandemic and with going back to school and everything that's happening have been doing some really unappreciated work out there. I think they get a lot of flack from parents and I think they're doing a fantastic job. So, and not only that, but she sent me some yarn to use as prizes. Now she said that I could use them for giveaways and I am going to include them in the Strictly Sock Along uh, prize. So the first one she sent me is by Nora George. It's called Sunset at the Burrow, which is, I'm assuming a Harry Potter reference. And it's uh, on her super sock base. And it's beautiful. Look at that. She said she bought a lot of yarn during lockdown. <laughs> so beautiful. And I'm actually gonna put this with, uh, as a package with one of the bags from Suzanne at inside number 22 who always very generously donates bags and she sent me this one she's already sent me one but she's also sent this one gorgeous kind of hearts it's almost Christmassy but it's also Valentiney. but look at this look at what she's done on the inside with her sewing machine how cool is that what a lovely detail so and she's got a matching DPN holder to go with it and I'm going to put the Nora George yarn with it because of the pinks and the reds and the purples. I just thought it was kind of a nice, a sort of clashy, nice match, if that makes sense. I don't know. I, it just makes me feel cosy looking at it. So that's going to be one prize parcel. So thank you so much, teacher friend, <laughs> whose name I don't know if I can say, and to Suzanne. That was really, really lovely of you. And um, she also sent a skein of, I've not heard of these, Vespa Sock Yarn, an exclusive self-striping colourway from Nitaly Things. It's from July last year and it's called Shimmering Pondvian and also Deep, Deep Blue Mini. There you go. And that is... Oh, it says on the front, 7525, super washable and nylon. And it's a self-striping one. So that's going to be absolutely lovely. That's going to go into the prize uh, pool for Strictly, even though it seems like I'm completely disorganised and don't know what I'm doing. She also put a skein in for me. It is Ellie's yarn at Craft House Magic. I am a big fan of Ellie as a person, as a vlogger and as a yarn dyer, and this is gorgeous. I've looked at this on Ellie's shop before and then just thought, no, no, I won't do it, I won't do it. It's time after time. She names a lot of her, a lot or all of her colourways after songs from the past. So this is time after time. Look at the yellow colour, oh, this is lovely. It's so pretty. I can't decide if it would make nice socks or a nice shawl. I mean, it would make nice socks and a nice shawl. I just can't decide which one I'm going to use it for. <laughs> so thank you. That was really, really, really lovely. Again, I'm just going to have to pop it to one side to look at it for a while because that's what I do. I look at yarn rather than use it. Um, right, I also got uh, an, a, the bag prize from Julie. Now, I've already shown you the one that she gave me. I'm going to show you 
the one that she's donated for you guys if you're joining the Strictly Sock Along. And she put in an extra thing that I wasn't expecting as well. This bag is huge and it is, I mean, everything Julie does is beautiful and she does it so well. So, oh, nearly dropping the other bit. So this is the bag, it is enormous. You could get a sweater in here. It is so huge. It's got the cutest little woodland creatures uh, print on it. The contrast is this beautiful peachy colour and that is all into the lining as well. How do you do that? How is the, look, the lining's there, but, and then it's there. That baffles me, that does, Julie, that's so clever. You've got a really nice big handle here. You've got her card is there. And then to go with it, she has put in a whole King Cole crochet kit. So this is a, a set of double knit yarn and it's enough to make this beautiful shawl. And look, the headband as well, matching headband. I quite fancy making myself a headband. Gaynor's been making a headband. And then I was looking at Rel, the dabbling hook, Rel, who's donated um, one of her patterns as a prize. I was looking through there when I was making the prizes thread and I noticed she's got two headband patterns, crocheted ones. And I was like, oh, I quite fancy the idea of that headband. Hmm, watch this space. Um, and that's the yarn on the back. So that is going to be one. Um, so the yarn here matches the yarn on the picture. It's an actual kit to make that. And it's going to go with this bag. So that is going to be one prize package, which would suit a crochet. So I'll make sure when I draw the prizes, because um, I'll have some flexibility, like I don't assign exact prizes all the time, certain things I think, right, I want to give it away in that week. But I will have a look at the people that I draw and think, oh, well, that, that prize might not suit her because she's a knitter, she's not a crocheter. And I do go and have a look and make sure that I try to match up the prizes appropriately. Um, I mean, some of them are random, but I do try to pay attention to stuff like that. So thank you, Julie. That's a, another amazing prize. Thank you. Um, I've got some stitch marker sets as well. Um, I have got, and I should also say that, I, the, that I've had a few things donated where the, the people themselves are going to be um, sending them direct. So I don't have them here. So I really, really would encourage you to go and look at the prizes thread because they're all gonna be on there and you'll be able to see. And I will share them on Instagram, like I said. As I really want you to get a sense of everything that's up for grabs, even though I don't have everything in front of me. These ones are my ones. I've got everything smells so nice that I've got in my lap at the moment. And I will show you why. These are from AJ and Me. Now, oh, sorry, AJ and Me Handmade, which is Millie. And Millie's contacted me before because she's got a lovely little boy who watches the podcast. Hi, Aiden. <laughs> and she said, oh, we've started to make and sell stitch markers. So we'd love to send some as prizes. So I'm gonna put, I've got two sets to give away and I'm gonna put them with part of the prize packages. But this is my set, because it says on the packet, where does it? To Ali, enjoy, love Millie. So these are mine and they're autumn themed. They're gorgeous little sparkly leaves. And then I've got a little glass bead there as well. They're all lobster claw ones and it was in with, so, and all of the little prize ones are like this as well. It's the, oh, I don't know, where do you get your candles from, Millie? They just smell gorgeous. So I've got a Taylor's of Harrogate sweet rhubarb tea was with it. And then I've got a little bag and there's a little candle in it. And honestly, it is the nicest smelling candle. It's really strong. I would, if I had to choose, I'd say it did smell of sweet rhubarb. I don't know why I'm showing you a candle. You can't smell it. Here, have a smell. <laughs> smell it. <laughs> oh, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to have to find out where she gets her candles from. So that's mine. Can't have it unless you win the one that's like it. And then she sent me a Christmas themed one and a um, autumn themed one as prizes. Now I'm gonna take them out, but I'm gonna pop them back in. And they're the same, they're all tied up. I'm not gonna take them apart like I have my own one. They're all tied up like that with a little bit of string. You get a candle. Oh, that is lovely as well. That's a different one. God, that is Christmas, that is. 
Oh my goodness, that smells divine. And then you've got another tea at the back here. I can't see what it is. And then you've got the Christmassy themed. Oh, this is so cute. You've got a Christmas tree and a stocking and some bells and that cute little gingerbread man. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get these. There you go. How cute are they? So that's the Christmas one. So I'm going to pop that in with one of the prizes as well. And then I think the autumn one is the same as my one. Oh, different candle again. Oh, that smells like apple. Oh, that's beautiful, that is. Millie, I've just remembered I haven't actually messaged you to let you know these have arrived. I shall do that immediately. Oh, yes, these are the same. They're leaves. How am I going to... Sorry, this is a terrible way to try and show you. They're not going to behave and sit the way I want them to sit, are they? You get, you get the idea. You get the idea. Beautiful stitch markers, yummy tea, gorgeous smelling candle. And they all go in these little envelopes. I'm going to keep them in the little envelopes to pop them in with the prize packages. So thank you, Millie. And that's AJ and Me Handmade. They're a new business, so go and check them out. And I'm going to pop these on the prizes thread later in the week. I'm just looking around me trying to see if there's anything I've missed. And I don't think there is. I think I've got everything I wanted to show you but I probably have missed something so apologies if I have. Okay we're still on the Strictly Soccer Long but I'm actually from the future now which is why I'm slightly lower down because I'm no longer sitting on a chair because I'd already cleared it away I'm now sitting on a box. <laughs> You're on a box and I'm on a box. I was editing and I realised I'd forgotten to mention something about the Strictly Soccer Long and that is that I've got a 24 pattern prizes which is amazing and um, I've got four copies of the Hannah Wrap by Hannah from Sheep's Alley. I've got any one of Rails patterns from the Dabbling Hook. Jules from So Sweet Violet has offered up one of each of every single one of her 16 patterns. Uh, Nikki has offered to purchase um, somebody a pattern up to the value of £10. Has that added up yet to 24 I think it has. I know, or am I missing one? If I'm missing one, because I don't have my notes in front of me, I'll put it on the screen. So what I've decided to do, and this was Dan's idea, he doesn't often have good ideas, but this is a really good idea. Every Strictly Saturday, I'm going to draw two winners of pattern prizes. I've already done the first one, and the two winners have been contacted already. It will always be someone from the FO thread, and there will always either be someone from the Strictly hashtag or the chatter thread, and I'll alternate that week on week. So the week just gone, it was from the hashtag. Next week, it'll be the chatter thread. And I'll do that every week. I've got enough prizes to do that every week for the full 10 week run of Strictly. So it's really exciting because it means we kind of constantly every week um, giving out some pattern prizes, which is fantastic. Also, I didn't say how excited I was that it, that it had started on Saturday. It was the official launch show here. Everyone revealed the partners that they were with. They're doing it really differently this year, but really impressed with how much they've managed to to do to keep the show going you know it's amazing they've all had to isolate in bubbles some of them are living away from their partners and it's really really good and the pairings are brilliant Nicola Adams is with Katia which could not be better it, that's just going to be fantastic Katia just she's completely bonkers but she's such a good choreographer so like I know like I know anything about dancing and um I love Bill Bailey oh I've forgotten how much Bill Bailey makes me laugh have you ever heard his song, Human Slaves in an Insect Nation? <laughs> if my sister's watching, she will be laughing. Um, yeah, so I just absolutely, I'm so, I'm so glad it's back on telly. It's something that as a family, we can all watch together and I'm just so happy it's on and it's Strictly season again. So that is me from the future, popping in just to say that. I'm now gonna go back to the higher up me of the past. I did want to mention, Last time my episode was called The Mystery of the Ballroom Silks because I was trying to find my Sherry Irish yarn that wasn't called Ballroom Silks, that was called Strictly Ballroom. Um, and I was like, I couldn't believe that I couldn't find it in the house of this size. And I found it. It was wrapped in unicorn tissue paper and I forgot that it was wrapped in that. So this is the Ballroom Silks colourway that I was looking for by Sherry Iris. I probably won't be knitting any socks with it this year. But I wanted to show you it anyway. Isn't it gorgeous? I love Sherry. She's such a lovely lady. Look at the speckles, look at the yellow speckles. So for anyone who's been fretting all this time since the last episode, you can rest easy, I found the yarn.
<laughs> okay, let's move on to the giveaway. Oopsie, just knocked you again. Right, four years of podcasting, four years of persistent insistence on talking to you about yarn and jabbering on for hours and 10,000 subscribers, which is just blows my tiny little mind. So I wanted to do a giveaway. So I bought some loom wool um, from Etsy in the colourway Faded Seaside Glamour. Now I definitely did see this on the bakery bears because I was watching them and I think it came up again. Oh no, the label has come off. I shall have to stick that back on. Um, and then I saw it come up on a couple of other feeds as well. So I, I've seen how it kind of works up and it's so beautiful. So I'm really glad I chose this one. So it's loom wool. And it is dyed in Somerset here in the UK. This is their twist sock base. Um, it's an 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. And it has got the most gorgeous colours and speckles. Look, look at this bit, look at that, look at that speckly bit. What is it? Why do we like the speckles so much? Why is that so satisfying? Why? Like, I see a speckle yarn like that, I'm like, oh, look at that. Look at those speckles. Why? Why is, why do I like that so much? Is it some kind of like natural human thing to like speckles? Would it have meant something was edible <laughs> back in caveman days? Who knows what am I saying anyway that's the yarn it came with some beautiful bird and blend tea so I'm gonna keep that with the yarn as well and to go with it I have got a gorgeous let me just put this back in the envelope and cut out the rustling right so I've got a gorgeous um, pattern for you to choose um, so Jane who is probably Jane um, a lot of her um, patterns are actually seaside themed, Isle of Wight themed. So the fact that the yarn is called Faded Seaside Glamour, she pointed out, is excellent because it really matches a lot of her patterns. So the prize will be any one of her patterns for the winner. You can go and choose. So you know what yarn you've got. You don't have to use the yarn with the pattern that you win. You can use it for whatever you want. But having that yarn might inspire you to pick a pattern from Jane's uh, Ravelry store. She is probably Jane on Instagram and on Ravelry. And I will link her down below as well if you want to go and browse her pattern shop. She's a really lovely lady. Um, she's a teacher, and she, a, a crafting teacher, and she works with community groups and in prisons, um, teaching knitting, crocheting, and spinning as well. Um, it's a really fascinating job that she does, and obviously it's been hugely affected by the COVID crisis, the COVID-19 crisis. So, um, yeah, so I hope, Jane, that you're able to... Uh, continue with your work I know I, I think she's been doing a lot via zoom and stuff like that but especially for the people in the community groups and um, who maybe rely on those classes for their mental health so anyway I'm rambling she's a lovely person so to so here are the official rules for this giveaway you have to go and do this um, I was going to do this on YouTube but it gets a bit overwhelming with comments when I do that so I'm going to do it in two ways. I'm going to open a thread on Ravelry in the usual way. And in, I, I will link to it below. Um, and you can hop on over there and answer the, um, the, I'll put a prompt. I'll put a question prompt so that you can reply to it. And then you'll be in with a, a chance of winning and I'll draw a winner before the next episode. If you're unable to use Ravelry, then please email me and uh, just, uh, tell me that you want to join in the giveaway which means I have to come up with a prompt now so I can put your entries in okay favorite seaside place I'm sure I've asked that before but I will never tire of hearing about it oh <laughs> I could hear shouting and it was two ladies jogging past and because they're jogging they're sort of talking really loudly to each other um, what was I saying? Okay, so the, the prompt is going to be, what is your favourite seaside place, even though I've probably asked that before. Head over to the Ravelry thread and answer it. If you can't use Ravelry, email me on littledropsofwonderful at gmail.com. Tell me your answer. I will put your answer in the Ravelry thread for you. There you go. That's how we're going to do it. 
Um, and thank you to every one of you for being here, for subscribing and for your endurance. Really, you all deserve a medal. <laughs> well done. <laughs> okay, books and stuff. I have finished The Convenience Store Woman. I loved it. It was a really, really lovely book. It was unusual. I'm going to have to press stop for a minute because I've just realised my camera's going bananas. Now we're running out of battery as well. So uh, I finished The Convenience Store Woman. It was brilliant. Uh, the main character is such an unusual character for a book. It's a really short book. It's funny. I've lent it to my mum, so I don't have it here, but I know my mum will love it. So I moved on to Salt to the Sea, which is this one by Ruta Sepetis. It is about a group of young people trying to um, escape the war, uh, the Second World War, and they board the Willem Gastloff boat, which is later sunk. Um, it's hit by Russian torpedoes, and it's the, the biggest loss of life in maritime history. Over nine and a half thousand people died with 5,000 of them, oh, get emotional talking about it, being children. And um, they were all, well, they were, the majority were civilians just escaping the war. And I have never read, I haven't read a book this quickly in ages. It was so, so good. And I, I'm not gonna give anything away, but it was the last lines of the book basically were saying, it was a note from the author just saying, yeah, these, these stories need to be told. You know, if the survivors aren't here, of anything that happens in our history around the world, not just with this. But if people aren't here to tell the stories, we have to tell the stories. We have to keep them going. And um, this is a really good book. I can't recommend it highly enough. And Frauka, who recommended this, thank you, because I know that Lilia's gonna read this. I'm gonna lend it to my mum. And my stepmom has actually downloaded it on her Kindle, because she wants to read it too. Cause she she likes to think that she knows, she has quite a bit of knowledge about history, and she'd never heard of the Warren Gustav. So you've opened a few people's eyes there. So thank you for that recommendation. Really enjoyed it. Um, I get some brilliant recommendations doing the vlogs, by the way. I've already ordered two books, just from people chatting in the comments. It's terrible. I'm getting like a book stash, like a yarn stash now. I ordered a book for Lilia. So you've heard me talking about Black and British, which I'm by David Olasoga, which I'm listening to on audiobook. I talk about it a lot because it's a really long book. So I've been listening to it for a long time. I've, I've been listening to, I think I've listened, I'm on chapter seven and I've still got over 16 hours to go. It's a big book. Um, and I talk about it because not only is it an important book because of its subject matter, our shared history, um, black and white shared history but it's a really 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 good book it's really good it's 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 well told it's well researched the guy that reads it I could listen to him until the cows come home which is fortunate given that I've got 16 hours to go <laughs> it's just really good and that's why I talk about it a lot anyway David Olasoga who is a British historian if you didn't know very well known British historian very very interesting guy to listen to talk. Um, he released a kids version or a young adult version of Black and British, which is not 16 hours long. It's a kind of, uh, what do I want to say, a short, not a shortened version, but a summarized, a sort of summarized version of his big historical book, Black and British, a short essential history. And on the back it says, when did Africans first come to Britain? Who are the well-dressed black children in Georgian paintings? Why did the American Civil War disrupt the Industrial Revolution? These and many other questions are answered in this essential introduction to 1800 years of black British history, from the Roman Africans who guarded Hadrian's Wall right up to the present day. Now, I bought this for Lilia and she's read a few pages and is really loving it, but she's reading some other book about models undercover. So she wants to finish that first. But I'm gonna read this um, because I'm loving the other book so much. I want the shortened version. I'm not very good at remembering facts and, and drawing on things that I've listened to or read. It's not a strong point of mine. So actually reading something that's kind of summarizing it is gonna be a huge help for me. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd let you know. And it was um, Heather, so yeah, I'm sure it was Heather on Instagram that let me know that the kids version was out. So that's my books and stuff section for today. My battery light has just come on. Let's see if we can finish before it dies. 
uh, I'm not going to do an and finally because like I say I I'm not prepared for it so I think I'm just going to let you off the hook do you know like when you're on a training session at work and you're supposed to finish at four and the trainer says look we'll just work through the break we'll finish at three and you're like okay yeah that sounds good so I think we'll just been through the break we'll just finish early how's that for everybody <laughs> and I'm gonna go and edit this all together and try and make it make sense if uh, you want any more I am vlogging every single day throughout October so I will put a link below to the playlist of my vlogtober and on the screen somewhere as well if you want to come along and join us for the ride we do have some fun there's been a lot of talk this week about the differences in British and American English and the different expressions that we use that mean something innocent here or in America that means something really rude in America or here and it, I've been reading the comments have been so funny I have so much fun reading through the comments and the things that come up and it's just been brilliant I just love something like this always happens when I do a vlog series I discover something um, we're also doing a song of the day every day so I have a playlist as well that's called the Eldow uh, vlogtober song of the day playlist it's on spotify and i'll link that underneath as well so if you want to go and have a listen to it spotify is free to use unless you want to get rid of the adverts in which case you have to pay but otherwise you can just i don't know put up the adverts um so i've made a playlist so that everyone can access it basically and we've been adding a song every day that we choose that means something to us so i'm gonna have to say goodbye because otherwise my camera's gonna die so uh thank you very much for watching and putting up with all this drivel i will see you in a couple of weeks time otherwise i'll see you later today on the vlog <laughs> happy knitting and happy crocheting and happy yarny pursuits bye